All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I am excited to see you all here today. My name is Liz Harris. I work for BikeWalk KC. I'm the events and marketing coordinator. We are here for a Let's Talk with the KC Spirit Playbook with uh, Morgan and Gerald from the Kids City of Kansas City, Missouri uh, Development, wait, Planning and Development uh, Department. Um, we're excited to have you here today because as you know, Bike Walk KC, um, part of our mission is to advocate for safer streets and for uh, places for people here in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and we are here because uh, we want to share that mission with the community and we want your participation as well. Um, the pandemic is accelerating many trends and big changes that were already in progress. Our Let's Talk series is a conversation with leaders in Kansas City to find out how that acceleration is happening locally for the transportation, health, uh, equity, and sustainability uh, issues that are core to our mission, as well as intersectional issues that often overlap with our work. So things like racism, housing, economic development, and more. Uh, and the Kansas City Playbook, the KC Spirit Playbook, uh, covers all of those things, I believe. The City Planning and Development Department is leading an update of our comprehensive plan, now known as the KC Spirit Playbook. The plan sets priorities and guides land development decisions to ensure that Kansas City, Missouri is a thriving people-centered community and a successful model for other American cities for future generations. And just for future reference, uh, for reference, the city's current comprehensive plan focus was adopted in 1997. And if my math is right, I think that was about 25 years ago. Um, so with that, I would like to encourage you all to introduce yourselves in the comments in the chat box there. Uh, tell us if you are representing a neighborhood organization or um, other civic uh, agency or organization. And uh, we'll get started with that. I, I'm here with Michael Kelly our policy and advocacy manager at Bike Walk KC, and he is going to get us rolling. Uh, thank you, Liz, and uh, good morning again to everyone. I, I do see a few uh, familiar faces, and um, we're really happy to have everyone here to learn more about um, this important document that's being uh, worked on right now for the city. Um, so again, we're going to be talking about the KC Spirit Playbook, and um, our main presenter today is Gerald Williams, the lead planner in the Long Range Planning and Preservation Division of the City Planning and Development Department. Um, I also want to note we are also joined today by Morgan Pemberton, who is a planner in the department as well. Um, so the way that our, our, um, our conversation today is going to go is um, we are going to start with a presentation from Gerald. Um, once he finishes that, that presentation, um, I'll have a few questions um, to kind of uh, set, the, set the scene for the audience Q&A, which will be uh, the remainder of our time um, on this virtual event today. So um, again, just to reiterate um, Liz's point, if you have questions or want to introduce yourself, uh, drop them in the comments and we will be sure to get to them um, when the time comes. Uh, so, uh, Gerald, uh, the floor is yours. Welcome. Gerald, you're muted. Sorry about that. Can everyone uh, hear me now and, and see my screen? Still no? You look great, Gerald, oh, we're good. and you sound right. great. Great. Okay. Well, thank you all for having us uh, today. Um, we've been doing this now uh, in kind of a virtual only world uh, out of necessity since uh, since May. Um, we're really still, and I'll go through the schedule in a moment, we're really still in the kind of outreach awareness building phase of this. We've, we've done quite a bit of engagement as well. For those of you who've been on our website, the playbook.kcmo.gov, um, you know, we, we have a weekly poll, weekly activity. We have the ongoing big five questions on there that we encourage you all, if you haven't been on there, please go uh, get on and answer those questions and give us your feedback. Uh, we have some mapping tools. We have an opportunity to, for you to, to 
video your perspective on certain issues and post those videos on the site as well. So we have a variety of ways for you to to interact, to give us your feedback to, and, 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 and your preferences on certain things. So um, anyway, I encourage you all to go there. Um, again, this is, uh, we've been calling it an update to Kansas City's comprehensive plan. As was noted in the intro, our focus plan was done in, in 97. Before that, it was 1947. So um, you know, we, we have a, we have a history in this city of, of neglecting to update our documents like this in a timely fashion. Uh, 23 years is a bit long, but these are these are basically a 20 year timeline document. Uh, so we're not too far off the mark, but it's certainly, uh, given all the challenges and all, all the ways that our city and our country and our world have changed since 1997, it is certainly time to update our policies, our priorities, set a new direction uh, and, and uh, make sure that we're addressing the, the, the challenges that we think we'll be facing in the next 20 years in our city. Uh, so with that, what is a comprehensive plan? Um, without reading this paragraph, it's essentially the plan that guides the physical development of the city. So if you think about where, where certain developments should happen or what kinds of land uses should be where, uh, transportation improvements and, and transportation system as a whole, um, uh, environmental issues, uh, trails, um, economic development, housing, neighborhood livability. Um, those are all issues that a comprehensive plan will typically provide guidance for, set policy direction for, create a to-do list for the next 20 years for all of those different topics uh, that, that, that decision makers can use in both a proactive and reactive way. They can use this document to help evaluate everyday proposals, or they can use this document really uh, in a more proactive way to, uh, to set an agenda for, for initiatives they'd like to pursue in the, in the next uh, coming year. So um, again, our focus plan was our, our uh, document that did this for a long time, and it was really a pretty effective and cutting edge document at the time, but uh, it's time to update it. We've got um, lots of changes, lots of new challenges. We have pandemics. We have uh, um, we have new technologies. We have uh, just an, a changing city and a changing world that we need to have uh, up to date policies to to help us react to and plan and navigate a path for the city uh, through these coming changes. So it's important for us to be planning um, for tomorrow as a city to make sure we're moving forward in the same direction at the same time together, uh, more or less. Um, it's really important for us now to make sure this is a viable plan by, by making sure it reflects the community's values and vision and goals and, and priorities. Um, we, we talk a lot about having plans that sit on a shelf, and that happens primarily when you have a plan that doesn't have that adequate level of community buy-in. So we're planning a two-year process um, to get that buy-in, to, to go out and talk to as many groups, as many people as we can to get different viewpoints and, and uh, synthesize that all into a document that we hope at the end of the day uh, does truly reflect uh, where Kansas Cityans want to be in the next 20 years. So we did a whole bunch of pre-planning in 2019 and into spring of 2020. Um, we built that website that you all I hope have seen. Uh, we did a lot of uh, some contractual stuff, some budgeting stuff. So we built the data book and, 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 and created a lot of mapping and data to help support the process. So um, now we're in into our uh, getting into our engage and, and really kind of still in our inspire phase. So again, we're, we're focused on building awareness, uh, building some excitement about the process, getting people engaged and getting them it, it directed to our, for now anyway, to our, our website and some other virtual activities that we have. Um, the goal of kind of this phase we're in now is, is to create a, a draft vision statement and some high level goal statements and to identify those topics that we'd really like to deep dive into in the next phase, which will start in, in uh, 2021 um, 
you know, we, we, we envisioned perhaps forming, uh, and none of this is, is finalized yet, but forming some, some uh, topic work groups or focus groups that'll, that'll deep dive in on the, whatever those topics are that we decide as a community that we want to deep dive into. Uh, and then, and this, all this engagement we're doing now is kind of designed to help get us there uh, to, to those important topics, as well as that draft vision and draft goal statements for the, the next 20 years. So we're starting from our focus plan. Um, it's been mentioned several times now in 1997, it was really kind of a cutting edge document, award winning document. Uh, I think many city planners at the time probably, I know our, our, our director Jeff Williams had a copy of it on his desk in New York when he was, uh, when he was working there in 1997. So it was a highly regarded kind of uh, innovative document. Um, and we don't want to lose that work. Many, you know, thousands of Kansas Cityans put in many hours to develop that over many years. Um, it's and it still holds up pretty good. Um, uh, of course, it needs to be refreshed. It needs to be uh, tailored to the challenges we face today that we that we weren't challenged that weren't facing in 1997. But we don't want to throw that out. So we're using it as a starting point essentially, or we, I, I, to rephrase that, we really like to pull as much of the focus plan as is still relevant into this new document. So part of what we're gonna be doing is to, is to look at those focus policy statements. Uh, and, the, and this is a list of those high level focus uh, principles for policy, those high level goal statements or policy statements that they guide the, the, the entire focus plan. Um, and we've, we've completed a review of the entire document um, as well to see what we think is still relevant, what we think we should pull forward in the new plan. And uh, it's extensive, you know, I think it had close to 900 initiatives uh, in, that, in that document. It's, th it's thousand pages long. It's really uh, uh, a lot to wade through, uh, but Vicki Notice, who was the director of the focus uh, plan, uh, who was a director of the city planning department after it was adopted for a number of years is helping us uh, with that work as well. So again, we'll be looking at the focus plan extensively as we move forward and uh, trying to figure out how best to pull those relevant elements into, into the new comprehensive plan. So in 1997, focus was it. You know, it was our, it was the only plan that we had at the time really that dealt uh, with, with all of these citywide issues. And it really, and it did, uh, felt like it had to cover a lot of territory because none of these topics had been covered on a citywide scale before. We had a major street plan, we had a parks plan, we had things like that, but we didn't have uh, very many other documents that dealt on a citywide basis, uh, planning documents that is. But now, and since then, we've done a lot of planning as a city. We have a lot of citywide documents. We have a housing plan. We've got a, uh, we have a trails plan, a walkability plan. We have a advanced KC plan that guides economic development. We have, we have uh, lots of, of citywide documents. We have a citywide business plan as well that's underway right now. So our job today, um, it's not just to look at focus and see what's still good and pull it forward, but to look at all the planning that's been done since focus and see how we can incorporate that in all into the comprehensive plan. We'd like to use the new comprehensive plan as sort of an umbrella uh, document that ties all of these other citywide documents and all of the 18 area plans that we've done, ties all that together into one place um, and maybe identifies some ways that we might want to approach updating some of these citywide documents as well in the coming years. As I mentioned, we've, we've done 18 area plans and I believe we've updated uh, two of them or maybe three of them. So um, the, the first area plan we did was in 2007 in Hickman Mills. And these are kind of like a mini comprehensive plan for a smaller subset of the city. And so we have divided the city in these 18 areas and we have, as I said, completed an area plan for each of them. And again, we don't want to lose that work. Um, we think it, much of it, many of these plans are, are fresh and just recently adopted or updated. Um, and we want to make sure that 
uh, we're, we're using uh, what we what we heard in the public engagement processes and, and through the recommendations of these plans and we're rolling that all forward as well into our new comprehensive plan. So just a little bit about our our branding and our name. Um, you know, it emanates from the uh, the famous uh, painting, Norman Rockwell painting after the 1951 flood that depicts the, the resiliency of Kansas City rolling up its sleeves and rebuilding after the flood um, in 1951. So we've, we've adopted that imagery and our communications department has come up with this really really great branding uh, imagery and graphics that we're using throughout the document. Um, so this KC spirit it comes straight, you know, the name comes directly from the painting, of course, and the playbook indicates that we'd like to, to develop that game plan, that playbook for the next 20 years for Kansas City. So in our, in our uh, pre preparations for, for this planning process, we identified these lists of potential topics and potential values or lenses that we'd like uh, to, be, uh, to be used throughout the planning process. This is a draft list. So we're using, again, this public engagement process to refine this list, uh, to, to add to it or change it as needed. Uh, to identify addition, additional lenses that we should be thinking about as we're developing uh, uh, recommendations uh, over the next two years. I kind of talked about this earlier, but again, uh, you know, our, our public engagement is really focused around two things, outreach, which is building awareness and excitement and, and just big, making people aware of the process, process and what it is and why it's important. Uh, versus engagement, um, which is where we're really trying to collaborate and interact and exchange ideas with the community. And we're doing a little of both of those uh, right now. Um, we're still trying to build outreach. We're still trying to reach out to groups and make them aware of the process. So that's kind of, I think that will be just ongoing. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we're having our first town hall. Uh, normally we would do this in person, uh, probably do too many of them in person. Um, but we're in a virtual world right now due to the pandemic we're in currently. So uh, we're going to try uh, for the first time for us. I know others have done it, uh, a, a town hall on Zoom on August 27th. Um, so uh, I think an invitation or link has either gone out or will go out soon for that. Um, and I encourage you all to join us there. We'll have breakout rooms just like you would in a normal public uh, meeting. Uh, facilitated discussions, we'll have, some, we'll have some questions we want you all to answer, uh, and then we'll have a report about what, what, what we learned and what people said. Um, so anyway, we hope you can join us then, uh, and there'll be, that'll just be the first of many, you know, meetings that we have over the next two years. Um, we have a public engagement request for proposals out on the street right now. Um, so we're going to hire a contractor to handle our public engagement process and to help boost our capacity to reach out to and maximize the number of touch points we've got throughout the community. So um, we're in the procurement process for that right now. Um, so we're working through that process. We should have uh, someone selected in September sometime and hopefully get them under contract quickly uh, to begin helping us with what Morgan and I have been doing and the rest of our team have been doing uh, all summer long. So I'll skip over that. So this is our website, playbook.kcmo.gov. Uh, if you haven't been there, I encourage everyone to please visit it. There's, as I mentioned, a lot of different ways to interact and give your input and thoughts. We have our big five questions. We have a lot of good background information about this process and why we're doing it and why it's important on there as well. We have a data book uh, story map page with with lots of great data about trends and in, 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 in demographics and transportation and other issues in Kansas City. Um, so that's a very useful tool as well. We have our poll and activity of the week. Uh, we have an opportunity, as I mentioned, for you to give your personal perspective in video format or other format as well. Uh, and then we have some mapping tools as well where you can you can get on a map and and enter your thoughts in specific locations, your suggestions for things that need to be improved or changed or, 
or places where certain policy should be directed or things like that. So again, uh, this is our, our website. You do have to register. It's a, it's a brief registration process. We don't ask a lot, um, but we do, we do want to get, uh, we want to maintain a way to, to stay in contact with those of you who, who engage on the site. Um, since we are in a virtual world right now, it's really important for us to be able to contact everyone uh, through that email system. So these are the five big questions we've been asking since May. Um, what's one thing that you love about Kansas City? What's one thing that you've seen in another city that you think would work well here? Um, what's one thing that you would improve our city the most that you, you think would improve our city the most? Uh, what is something that concerns you about Kansas City? And then the fifth one is sort of a catch-all. Um, what, what didn't we ask about that you'd like to tell us about Kansas City? Um, We've had uh, quite a bit of participation. Morgan's been busy uh, analyzing and synthesizing these results, and we'll, she'll be she'll be putting together a report about um, about what we found and what we've heard so far through these questions. It's these are open-ended questions. You can type as much as you want and give us long answers, and it, it takes a lot of work uh, to go through and and uh, and and analyze the results. But it's worth. It's time well spent, it's worth it. Uh, we have begun though to look through those responses and ask follow-up questions. So uh, we'll look through what everybody said about what they loved about Kansas City and then we'll ask follow-up questions to kind of dive a little deeper into uh, those thoughts and those suggestions as well. So you'll see that kind of format in, in our, uh, our weekly polls and activities in the coming weeks. Uh, these are some bullets about what our data book is. I'm not going to go over these in any great detail. Um, I would just encourage you all, if you're if you're interested in, in past trends on demographics and transportation and and, and equity and other things, uh, we've got a great uh, what we call data book on the site with lots of maps, lots of charts, um, the, and the ability to compare past to present, and maybe even look at some trends projected forward as well. So. Uh, it can be a lot to wade through. Um, we'll make these slides available to you all so you can see kind of a, a highlight of what we think the important points are. But, um, but I would encourage you all to take a look at that just to help inform uh, yourselves about Kansas City and the trends that are happening here as we think about moving forward. So how you can help uh, us would be to again sign up on the website and participate in all the different activities we've got. If you have a way to help us spread the word about this process, an email list, uh, an organization that you belong to that you can uh, help share links uh, to these to this website or, or information about this process, that's that's really uh, really appreciated at this point in the process. But we're trying to uh, to build awareness for as many people as we can. Um, and we're and again we're happy to come back to bike walk KC at any point during the process and and have conversations with you all about what your priorities are. I know some other groups have opted to uh, uh, have a, a conversation internally about you know what they they may go through the big five questions for answer and answer those as an or organization or a group. So. Um, uh, we'd encourage you to do those big five individually as well, but if Bike Walk would like to go do, uh, to submit some answers as an organization, I think that'd be a, a good thing to do as well. So again, I think I've hammered this over everyone's head uh, enough times today, but that's the address, playbook.kcmo.gov. Um, it's, it's really the central place for all of our engagement at this point in the process. If you have an upcoming event or, uh, or just any upcoming a meeting or anything that you think this kind of a presentation would be helpful at, um, we, would, we would love to do it. Just please let us know. Um, that's the, the, the main comp plan email is playbook at kcmo.org. Um, I think this next slide though has my email address and Morgan's email address as well and phone number. So. Uh, so if you have any suggestions on, on any of those things, please give us a phone call or an email. And, and again, please go to the website and participate in our activities. And uh, I believe that's it for our presentation. 
Okay. All right. Um, well, again, uh, first, I want to start off by uh, thanking both Gerald and Morgan for uh, uh, the presentation and for, for spending some time with us to answer questions um, from uh, community stakeholders about this. Obviously, um, as Gerald explained, this is a, a, a wide ranging document covering a lot of topics. And it's, it's important as, as much as we can to help make sure that members of the community are, are informed about this and have a chance to ask uh, questions and, and find additional ways to get involved. Um, so, so um, as I said, I, I'd ask a few questions um, before I turn it over uh, to the audience. And so um, just, just to sort of uh, get us rolling on that front, um, would you be able to um, tell us uh, um, a little bit more, one of the questions that I had was, um, how does this plan build on and enhance efforts for uh, Kansas City, Missouri to create a more walk and bike friendly community for everyone? Yeah, so um, I think in a lot of different ways. Um, so first we'll take a look at, as I mentioned, those citywide documents, our walkability plan, our trails plan, our bike KC plan, and uh, we'll, We'll try to uh, integrate those documents into the comprehensive plan so that the comp plan serves as a way to bring all those different, tie all those different elements, those disparate plans together and try to make sure that they work together uh, to create a system for transportation and mobility in Kansas City uh, moving forward. Um, so we're, we're right now we're going through all those documents. We're pulling out all the different policies and recommendations and projects um, so that we can pull all of that information into the comp plan and, and begin to try to coordinate it uh, through that comp plan umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we're doing is uh, we've, we've applied for funding through Mid-America Regional Council through their PSG Planning for Sustainable Places program. Um, for, we've asked for money to help us do a transportation uh, element of the comp plan so that we could actually hire uh, consultant to help us uh, to build our capacity to do a, a transportation and mobility plan for the city uh, as part of the comp plan process. So those projects are being scored now and discussed by the MARC committee. Um, we got some preliminary scores back and, and we scored well. I think we were the second highest scored project on their on their list, which bodes well. It doesn't guarantee funding, but uh, it's a good first step. Um, so again, I, I just uh, overall, I think mobility and transportation is going to be a huge emphasis and, and uh, point of, of discussion during the planning process. And we hope, um, well, I mean, I, our intention is that the comp plan will serve as a way to kind of bring all of those different transportation plans uh, together, our transit-oriented development policy, uh, the Mark Smart Moves plan. I mean, all of these different documents together, and make sure that they're they're coordinated and, and working together on a citywide basis. Absolutely, and thank you for that. And um, one other thing I um, wanted to to ask on is you you mentioned earlier in the presentation that um, you want this to be a, a model for other communities that are potentially looking at or, or coming up on their own time frame for updating their respective comprehensive plans. So a question that I, I wanted to ask is, um, are there other communities that are currently working through a similar process? And if so, what insights have, have Kansas City been able to glean from that in their own comprehensive plan updating process? Yeah, so uh, we've been reviewing, there's, there's a number of other cities that are either doing it right now or have recently completed uh, a, a comp plan overhaul or update process. Denver, Minneapolis, uh, Chicago, Boston. Um, there, there's a, a very, very long list of communities that we've been looking at who, who have done these processes. Uh, we looked at some of the award-winning documents, some places like Plano, Texas, and Oklahoma City that recently won uh, awards for their comp plans as well. So uh, we have a, 
we have a spreadsheet that'll make it'll give you a headache, but uh, I'm happy to share it. Uh, that that, that kind of highlights all the different elements of those plans that we liked, that we thought we want to mimic or copy, or thought we could improve on. But we wanted to be sure to try to to do in our process as well, and we're constantly looking for innovations as well, uh, at, even now. So it, it's it's probably a changing. Uh, answer throughout the process because we'll be constantly looking for ways to innovate and, and mimic and do those things. But we have done a fairly extensive kind of peer best practices review, and we'll continue. Uh, we'll we'll use that and continue to look for more as we as we progress. Great. And so I just have a couple more questions before we uh, open it up for the audience. Um, and, and again, anyone who has any questions, I'm already seeing a few in here. Uh, but if you have questions, um, please feel free to drop them in uh, the comments section and we'll, we'll do our best to get through all of them before the uh, time is up. Um, so so uh, my next question was, um, from your perspective, and, and this is also from Morgan too, obviously, since she's working on this as well, um, what do you believe is the biggest challenge um, that staff have faced with regards to the pandemic, and how are you working to address this? Well, we're um, it, the challenges have been pretty pretty intense because we're it's, and it's related to what we're accustomed to for public engagement process, which is normally a lot of in person meetings and going, not just meetings, but going to community events like a Saturday farmers market or something like that, where we can help uh, get, increase our touch points, as we call it, for for uh, contact with people, getting input, raising awareness, things like that. So we're limited uh, to a virtual only environment and it's really stifled our ability to reach out to certain communities that may be less digitally uh, 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 linked, you know, so or active. So we're, we're, we're looking now for, for things like, uh, um, I see David Johnson's on the, on the line here. He's been helping us with some bus strategies where we can put some ads and posters um, there he is. Hey, David. Uh, on bus routes to specifically go through those those uh, underrepresented communities, you know. So we're trying to target those bus routes that that give us maybe the maximum exposure in areas that we're not really seeing, because uh, we've we've actually mapped out all the uh, people who registered on the site, what zip code they live in. So we know what communities we're not hitting enough, and we know what communities we're kind of doing okay on, right? So. So that's been one challenge is the digital divide has been kind of a we're in a di digital only environment and the digital divide is a real thing and that's 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 one challenge we're facing and trying to overcome um you know and, and we're, we're employing a lot of different tactics the, the posters was one we do billboards uh we'll we'll put up posters in community centers and grocery stores and kind of those old school sorts of tactics as well to try to reach out to those communities um but the pandemic is going to be a challenge and I think we'll be able to, I mean, I don't know if anybody else, I think there are a few other communities, of course, that are going through a comp plan process, but we'll be able to kind of lead the way a little bit and how you plan during a pandemic. Um, and we might, we'll probably have the first comp plan that in recent memory that has a pandemic chapter in it too, you know, about how the city needs to respond or prepare for, for future pandemics as well. So. That's just a sampling of some of the things we're trying to do, um, but it is it's difficult and it's it's extremely uh, limiting to be in a virtual only environment right now. Right, right, and um, and there there's already uh, some chatter in the the comments uh, from some of our folks about the uh, ways to get involved in in especially the digital divide is is an important piece in in all of this, um, not just with the comprehensive plan, but how we allow folks to stay connected um, and have their voices heard. And it ties into my last question before we open it up for the audience, um, which is um, beyond some of the stuff that you already mentioned, how is the city working to ensure that equity is a guiding principle of both the plan itself as well as current and uh, future strategies related to the plan? Well, that, that's a good question, uh, you're, and it's uh, it's it's timely. We've we've actually been over the past few weeks uh, meeting uh, as a as a team 
with our director, Jeff Williams, to talk about that issue specifically and how we want to how we want to deal with equity and race uh, in the comp plan um, during the during the public engagement process. How do we want to address it with recommendations and policies in the plan? Um, we're eventually going to have some kind of, as I mentioned, a, a committee structure or work group structure focusing in on specific topics. And is equity and race one of those? And the answer is probably yes. Uh, so I, I think a quick answer to that is we've been we've been thinking hard uh, and extensively about that specific question over the past few weeks, and we're de developing a framework for how we're going to move forward. The quick answer is um, we're good. we're going to use equity and uh, as a lens for everything we do in the plan. Um, I know that's kind of a short, succinct. Uh, statement, but that's basically our going to be our approach. Um, you know, we've had some thoughts about um, we, we would like, I think, and this is just my personal preference to avoid having uh, a, a bolt on equity chapter and instead have equity embedded and integrate fully integrated uh, in every chapter and every recommendation that we have throughout the document so that it's uh, it's fully the plan will be completely immersed in that in that kind of through that kind of lens um, throughout the process. So um, it's heavy on our minds, and uh, it's going to be a huge point of emphasis uh, during the, pro the planning process and within the final document itself. Will be uh, equity will be central to the, to the whole thing, mm -hmm. and everything from transportation investments to and you know our focus will be on the built environment on the physical development of the city, you know, so things like transportation and housing and, and access to food and uh, open spaces and environmental justice and uh, all of those issues will be, uh, will be front and center. Sure. And how, and thinking about how we undo some of the in, inequities that we've created in the city as well, not just being equitable moving forward, but how do we uh, improve some of the inequity that's been created over the past decades. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, so again, at this time, we're, we're going to start opening it up to um, um, audience questions. And I'm just scrolling through here, making sure I, I see as many of them as I can. I think there was a question from uh, Laura Steele about um, Kansas City's uh, regional physical activity plan being developed through the Centers for Children children's healthy lifestyles and nutrition. Um, I think Morgan started to answer this, but um, is there a way for additional plans like these that are currently being developed um, to be incorporated into um, the KC Spirit playbook? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we have several kind of parallel planning processes going on. The KC Public Schools is, is a kind of a planning process. Our health department is updating their chip. The, um, there's a climate action plan being created. I mean, there's all sorts of kind of parallel planning processes that we are linking ourselves, we're trying to link ourselves closely to. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think in Morgan, uh, am, I, am I misstating to say that we created a place on our site to put those things? We're working on that right now. Okay. It's, it's going to be a matter of, we've met with several different organizations around the Kansas City area that are working on their own plans like that. And we're, all, we're always looking for more people to get in contact with because this plan is for everybody. So if there's a group that's working on something in Kansas City, we wanna make sure that we're working in tandem with them and uh, not making recommendations that are gonna go against what they're trying to do in their community. That would not work very well. Um, so we're, we're trying to gather all that information and get an idea of these plans and what their timelines are um, some have websites up, some don't. So we're in the process of like gathering all that information and creating a page on our website where people will be able to uh, find those links and find that information. And also with those other organizations that are doing their own plans, um, for example, the Downtown Council is working on Imagine 2030. We're happy to include in our newsletters any um, announcements for events that they're doing. Um, if they've got any specific requests 
like they want people to go participate on a poll on their website or something like that, we're happy to coordinate and try and join forces in this very weird and virtual time. <laughs> yeah, and if um, I didn't catch the name of the group that you said was working on that plan, but that sounds like a follow up presentation that we should we should try to do. So uh, I'm now follow up with you, Michael, after and get maybe a contact for that. Sure, absolutely. And um, just looking at the, the comments here, um, there's, there's a, a suggestion and a question, and I think it's an opportunity for you guys to speak again to uh, part of your outreach. Uh, so Nyla uh, from Ivanhoe mentioned that a suggestion is to reach out to neighborhood associations to determine if they have a call blast text system where they can promote the playbook and how to access. And this is followed up by a question from Rob Collins, which asked, uh, could we link a text number, I hope I have that correct, Rob, that sends a similar message that the weekly email reminders do? Um, that could boost engagement with those that aren't always on a computer, maybe. Um, so I, I, I know that you guys have been obviously strategizing on trying to find a number of ways to, to reach beyond um, the, the digital elements. So is there any work that is being done with regards to the texting element, at least at the moment? Yeah, so, and, and also I think to the extent that we can utilize other people's phone trees or automated text messages or phone messages, uh, it, we're, we're trying to, I think, link up with as many of those as we can so that we can reach out that way in the future as well. Um, and Morgan, did we have a playbook text number set up? Yeah, this the city has, I forget what they call it, but they have their emergency line where people can submit their phone number to get, receive notifications. We set up a similar thing for the playbook where we can send out notifications for events and things like that to whoever signs up with their phone number. Um, right now, though, we only have a, a handful of people who have submitted their phone number to be a part of that, that text chain. Um, primarily, everyone is engaging with us on the website with their email addresses. But we do have that capability. Um, we just don't have access to existing phone trees or um, existing like phone lists that we can use. We're really depending on the um, the generosity of other organizations and community groups to take our links and share them among their people, whether it's by email or by text message. And we do, we have a great communications team. If anybody ever wanted to um ask for a little help in putting together some language or some links or what they need from us to do something like that we're happy to facilitate excellent and and so i think that's that's something that we can do here is um nyla i'd be happy to um help you connect with morgan and, and gerald moore so that they would be able to um help work with your uh call blast text system um to help inform more residents in ivanhoe um so yeah so um, another question that um, we had, because we did have some that were submitted beforehand, um, this is actually another question uh, from Nyla, is um, how uh, will the, the status of the geo bond repairs and, and sidewalk replacements, how, if at all, will that play into the, the updates or, or the shaping of the comprehensive plan update? Well, so, so the comp plan will, I don't know how it will impact the geo bond specifically, but I, the, the, the comp plan will be designed to guide decisions on those kinds of future investments. So um, when it's done and when it's adopted, uh, and, and if it's used the way it's supposed to be used, uh, the plan will guide uh, how we're making those investments and where and when, uh, and, it, and it'll identify priority uh, investments and projects and, and, and areas where those things should be occurring as well. So um, that is how it's supposed to be used you know, in the city. I think the state charter even requires that um, the city uh, um, use the comp plan to guide their capital improvement planning. Uh, the extent to which that has happened in the past uh, is, is I think has been mixed in the city, but um, there was certainly, there's a, certainly a long list of successful projects from the focus plan that did get funded and built and things like that, but how uh, the further you get from 1997, you know, the, 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 maybe the more it fades into the distance, and uh, I don't think we've been entirely consistent in, in 
evaluating our, our capital improvement planning or geo bonds or whatever against what the comp plan or area plan uh, would recommend. But that's the intent. Yeah. Sure. Um, and an, another question um, that we had here that I uh, we got beforehand that I wanted to um, ask you both. Um, find it. Okay, there we go. Um, so there was a question about transportation metrics used to define and quantify uh, quality and return on investment of proposed projects. Um, this includes investment and vetting process for projects um, and primary drivers uh, for selection. Uh, would, would you guys be able to, to speak at all to how that plays into um, what's going into the comprehensive plan update? Sure. Um, well, as I said before, and each one of those citywide transportation plans has their own kind of set of metrics for whatever mode they're dealing with. Um, uh, but our plan is to try to uh, to integrate all of those under the comp plan umbrella and make sure they're working together. And, and the, the way we've described our project through MARC, through the PSP application we put in, uh, we, we, we would use that, that money if we get it to help develop those metrics for how we make, uh, how we measure success, how we measure need, how we prioritize, um, and how we how we how we how we uh, measure our systems, you know, uh, moving forward as a city. So that's definitely our intent through that mark funding uh, and through the comp plan process is to help identify metrics for for everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, let me see. I think I had um, one more question, and uh, that was actually. Um, let me see. Oh, there's a, a comment uh, from Nyla about, um, she uh, wanted to express the need for purposeful outreach to neighborhood associations across the city, uh, connecting with Center for Neighborhoods and you and I to see if they can help facilitate outreach. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have, have been in contact with them, but uh, would you like to, to speak to whatever contact you've had with them, uh, with those groups thus far, if any? Um, I don't know if we've done a presentation to Center for Neighborhoods yet, but they're on our list for sure. We've been trying, we've been reaching out to those groups. I know Morgan's been working with you and I, I think. I oh, know you work with NNI, I'm sorry, not you and I. <laughs> so, so no, our, our intention is to work with all those groups. We've compiled actually a, a database of all those different kind of neighborhood and, and neighborhood umbrella groups and community organizations and uh, our are in the process of reaching out to them. Um, and again, this is a two year process, so it's gonna take some time to get around to everybody because it's, it's just you know us for now. But it's, hopefully when we do get that public engagement contractor, our capacity will increase and, and the speed with which we can get out and, and effectiveness with which, which we can reach out to groups will increase as well. But, um, so mm -hmm. when we, are, we are aware of those groups and are, are, are planning to work with them through the process. Understood. So I had one more question, and this is uh, kind of just to um, help people kind of understand kind of how this works is, would you be able to talk uh, talk with us a little bit about um, this week's uh, poll and activity and kind of the subject that it's kind of centered around? Yeah, I'll let, Morgan, would you mind uh, walking people through that, the, the, with this week's poll and activity? Yeah, sure. Um, so as Bo mentioned before, we started asking our polls in an open-ended format and allowing people to give us as much or as little information as they wanted to in response. So we've been going through those and categorizing them according to the topics and the main topics in those responses. And now we're going, coming back with multiple choice questions that are based on what we've been hearing so far. We're asking people to narrow down um, a very extensive list for each of those main topic areas in what is most important to them and to make it as fair of a practice as possible. We're implementing a, um, oh gosh, what's the word? Categorized voting system. Um, I forget what it's called, but when we're asking people, you know, choose five of this list and then we'll come back with another list and, you know, choose two of them. And it doesn't mean that the ones that aren't selected as the top five or two aren't incorporated into the plan. It just means that we're figuring out where the community's focus is. 
And as Bo also said, this is an ongoing process. So we're gonna be constantly coming back to these polls and these activities and um, re-downloading our reports because we know that there's people that are gonna be going back and filling it out after they join the process, maybe a little bit later. Um, and that's totally fine because we're gonna keep updating our reports. We're gonna keep evaluating everything and it's all gonna come together later as a cohesive structure for the plan. Uh, for example, this week we're asking about uh, we're asking about housing issues, and we are also asking about economic is issues. So we've got a list of 15 or 16 subtopic areas that fall under those that people have mentioned in their responses, and we're trying to drill down into what those most important issues are, and then also why they're the most important issues. So we're still at a very high level of evaluating the responses we're getting. And we're going to keep evaluating responses as they come in. So it's going to be kind of an ongoing wheel going around. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, uh, we wish you guys luck with uh, that continuing wheel. Again, um, Gerald Williams, Morgan Pemberton, thank you both very much. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Liz to wrap it up and take us out of here. All right, thank you. Thank you, Michael, for leading this conversation and to Gerald and Morgan for joining us today and sharing with us about this really important topic. I think we all have our assignment for this week, right? We're going to go do the poll of the week. We're going to do the, uh, the activity of the week. And then we're going to share those with our friends and neighbors to make sure that everybody gets a chance to help plan the future of our city. Um, I, uh, I want to thank um, you all for joining us today. Uh, our friends, our partners, our sponsors, our funders, our integral to this work to this work and we appreciate each of you for helping support uh, BIQOT KC and our mission for places for people through this time. Um, I'm going to share a screen of our uh, of our funders who are generously supporting these virtual sessions that we are doing. Um, thank you for joining us for this. Um, I will send a follow-up email tomorrow with links that we covered today, um, including information from the chat box. So if any of you, once again, um, would like to share the organization that you represent or that you're a part of or that you think would be a great fit for um, one of the uh, presentations, one of the KC Spirit Playbook pre presentations, drop that in the chat box and I'll make sure that that gets to the appropriate folks. Um, I will be sending a, that follow-up email tomorrow I want to thank you all again for joining us today and we'll see you again next time.